Hi, I'm Rick McMillan, and I've enjoyed building my own computers for a number of years. I'm, I'm no real computer geek, but it's not really that difficult, and I thought maybe I'd share it with you. There's several things you have to decide when you plan out your PC. You want to decide, first of all, what kind of CPU do you want? There's basically two. There's the AMD, and there's the Intel uh, CPU, because the motherboard is specific to the CPU, and the the socket is specific to uh, the version of CPU that you have. So it's very important that you match the socket of your motherboard with the CPU that you want to get. Installing the CPU is pretty simple. You just There's usually some sort of key to line it up with. Uh, the AMD have pins that Intel don't anymore. Just kind of line it up, push the lever down, locks into place. And as far as the CPU goes, you need to consider how much money you want to spend on one. They have like two core, four core, six core, and eight core uh, processors. The Intel, I believe, are multi-threaded. I don't think the AMD are. So the Intel can be faster, but they tend to be a lot more expensive. Uh, the other thing you need to consider is how many hard drives do you want to install, how big a storage space you want. And so you need to look at the motherboard and see how many ports it has for plugging in hard drives. Uh, if you like to use USB 3, you want to see how many USB 3 they, that they have. Uh, you want to determine, do you need mega processing for video? Is Because most, uh, most motherboards will have onboard video, but if that's not sufficient, you may want to buy a video card, an additional video card to really soup up your video performance for games or if you're doing graphics. Um, I do a lot of photography editing, so I need a good graphics card. One better than this is the older version. Um, to keep up with the huge files that I have uh, when I go into Adobe editing. So it's fairly graphic intensive. Plus, I like to use more than one monitor. So those are things you need to consider when planning out your, your PC build. And you need to do a little research to find out what the latest technology is. And you need to decide which brand you want to go with, whether you need a video card or not, what kind of CPU you want. Plus, if you want to overclock. If you really want to push your PC for a lot of performance, you may want to overclock your processor. And to do that, typically you're going to need good cooling. Uh, this is the, the uh, cooling block that came with this processor. This is an AMD processor. It fits right here and it snaps on. It's fairly easy to, to install here. It just snaps with this lever. And there will be thermal paste on the bottom to make a good seal here. But this is, this is a stock cooler and it usually comes with your CPU. If you want to go, if you want to overclock, you want something bigger. This one's a little bit bigger, as you can tell. It's not your standard, uh, but it will cool belt better. Uh, they make larger ones than this. This is just one fan. They make, make ones with like up to three fans that I'm aware of, maybe more. And they have liquid coolers. That's what I got for my latest build is the uh, Corsair self-contained liquid cooling system and those are supposed to be I think probably the best if you want to overclock that means moving up your the speed of your processor by a lot more than it was originally designed for but this is allowed in some of the new processors for the Intel processors if there's a K on the end that means it was designed to overclock uh, and what you'll do the way you'll do that is when you start up your computer you go into the BIOS and you'll set all that up uh, the other thing is how much memory do you want for your computer? Uh, I think 4 gigabytes is probably the minimum nowadays. 8 is probably fairly standard and I'm getting 16 on mine. Most mo uh, current motherboards can take up to 32. I've seen uh, some that will do 64. You, you push them in and they kind of snap into place. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, the CPU is pretty easy to put in. I just showed you how to put it in. The cooler goes right on top. If you're going to use a graphics card, it typically will go into one of these slots. Or typically the first one if you're just installing one graphics card. If you're really crazy about gaming, you might get two graphics cards and, and link them together. 
uh, I don't have the kind of money for that uh, type of gaming. Oh, and the other thing to kind of make everything work is your power supply. And you'll need to figure out how big a power supply you need. If you're not going to get, if you're not going to overclock your processor, if you're not getting a video card, if you just go on uh, low dollar, low budget, you can probably get by with a small power supply, maybe 300 watts. I'm not sure exactly how low you can go, three or 400 watts, two or 300 watts maybe. If you're going to do any kind of video card, typically they recommend four to 500 watt power supply. I got a 750. You can see there's a spider of connections that go from your, your power supply. This is what gives life to your whole computer, and it's how it turns off and on. There's a switch in the back. Uh, you'll also the switch to your, your case. That's the other thing you need to determine is what case you want all this to fit in. If you want a uh, medium tower, small tower, if you're going to put a, a large graphics card, you probably want a full-size tower. And that's what I got over here is a thermal take. A chaser Mark 1 and it is uh, a very large full case tower and it will hold a very large I think a one foot long video card but anyway all these connections go somewhere the most important one is your 24 pin which plugs into the motherboard to give power to the motherboard now this one has a 20 plus plus 4 so this one has to be uh, lined up to strike right for all the pins to fit in. But it, it goes, I can't tell from here which way they go in, but something like that. And everything's keyed pretty much so that you don't put it in the wrong way. You typically have that and somewhere on the board you'll have a 8 pin. And here's an 8 pin right here. And one of these should be an 8-pin. I don't have time to find that right. I have a 6-pin. Sometimes you can uh, use that instead if you don't have an 8-pin. And then all these different connectors go to your hard drives and your CD-ROM or DVD-ROM. And your fans. Typically your fans are 4-pin or 3-pin connectors. Those are the smaller ones. And... Uh, power supply basically just bolts in from the back and the motherboard has all these holes on it and they just screw into the base plate of your uh, case and all these these are uh, for your hard drives to plug into and this is what your hard drive looks like this is the old style hard drive where you have the platters that spin around and you have the head that reads the magnetic uh, information on the platters as they spin. The new hard drives are solid state and they're super fast but they're super expensive compared to these. So what's recommended and what I'm doing for this case is I'm taking uh, two solid state drives for my programs and my operating system then I'll have a large uh, platter drive like this for my storage for all my picture files like a three terabyte for this and uh, 500 gigabytes for my programs. So anyway, I want to just kind of give you an overview. Hopefully I didn't leave anything out. I'm sure I did. And uh, to give you an idea before I get into my particular build, my particular PC, because I'm building specifically for my camera and maybe just a tiny bit of gaming, but really the focus is for doing photo processing and maybe some video processing like I'm doing this video here. Anyway, that's it and uh, thanks. Hope you enjoy the video and learn a little bit and don't be too afraid to give it a try. It's, it is a little scary. You'll have to install the operating system from scratch, but uh, the last several versions of Windows have really gotten a lot easier. Uh, I'm up to Windows 8 now. I can't say I like Windows 8 very much, but it, it does make my computer faster, so I'm going to give it a try. My wife tried it, and the interface was so new, she had me take it off because things aren't as intuitive uh, from the old operating system. But it is faster from, from what I understand, so I'm going to give it a try. Anyway, that's it. 
and hope you enjoy the video. Okay, here is a uh, very useful website I thought I'd show you if you're starting to configure your computer and build it from scratch and you know what you want on it. Uh, it's important to figure out how much power you need in your power supply and here's a website from Thermaltake. Uh, it's www.thermaltake.outervision.com slash power or you can just google uh, Thermaltake power supply calculator or Thermaltake PSU uh, calculator and this will come up and it's very useful if you're uh, wanting to figure out how much power you need in your power supply don't want to get too big a one or too small uh, it's especially important if you're going to be building a powerhouse gaming computer of some kind this covers just about everything what kind of CPU you're going to buy what brand specific CPU even if you're going to overclock and buy how much uh, how many video cards this will accept up to four different video cards how many hard drives and what kind it talks about what kind of CD-ROM or DVD reader-writer that you are going to put in it, uh, any PCI cards that you're going to put in it, fans, what size, coolers, water pumps, system load, and even has an aging factor that it puts in there and it recommends at least 20% if you're going to have your CPU at least a year. Based on this, uh, this calculates about 616 watts for my computer build and I bought a 750 watt power supply so I should be good to go. Anyway, this is it. Just want to show it to you so that you can take advantage of this good resource that's out there.